Oh, it's good to see you. This is the best time of the day for me when I get to talk with you. I'm John Zadar. This is Monday, March 14th, and you're watching On Top and Hot. What I do every day on the weekdays, I go out and I look for stocks in the OTC market, penny stocks. I'm looking for stocks that got something going for them, something unique, something powerful. Then I come back and I share it with you. Today was a little hard to do that in case you didn't notice. It was a hard day on the market. Very few shares sold on the OTC. But I did what I said I would do and I got three very interesting stocks plus one that I want to share with you. So come along and I'll show you what I got. Now, starting on the OTC markets is nothing new for us. I'm here every single day. Truth is, this is the only site I come to when I initially start my due diligence on an OTC stock. I don't go anywhere else. Why? Because this is the only site I found that is always current. The SEC and FINRA update this site every single day. So why waste my time going to Google, doing a search and sorting through old information, trying to find what's current? That's all this site produces is current information. Make life easy. Come over here. So we are looking at UMAX. UMAX. This is UMAX Group. Finished today at 0 0.0994. 26% up, though the day was better at the beginning of the day, as it was for most stocks. Speaking of, what kind of day was it? We came over here to see how many shares we sold on the entire OTC market today. Well, get out of there. That was 7.5 billion shares. And you're going, well, that sounds like a lot of shares to me. Well, it is, it is, but let's put this into perspective. December, we were doing between 10 and 14 billion. That's almost half of that. And a year ago, we were doing 45 to 60 billion shares. We have been falling ever since then. So this is more than scary. This is more than desperate. I am worried. All right, back to the game. <laughs> this stock is on the pink tier. She's current. She has got a verified profile and a transfer agent. So that looks good. We like to see those green ticks. Now, she's got a stock promotion going on. That means that she is paying people to write about her. It's not a pump and dump. They're just articles. You know, they're rehashing the old information, talking about stuff that's going on, which they've got a lot to talk about. The fact of the matter is this company is into production media. They produce comedies and they put them out there all over the place and they're doing a lot. They've got a lot of news, which is why I find this interesting. They are a self proclaimed shell company. That means they're not making any revenues and they've got nothing to tell us. Well, I, I'm surprised with everything they've got going, I would expect them to be making money. Maybe we'll uncover something as we're going along here. Now they did have news today and really it's the same sort of news that keeps coming out. And I know that because I see this stock many times bouncing on news. And that's why I'm showing it to you now. I feel guilty. I have seen this stock come and go many times and I never show it to you. I mean, I have good stocks to show you, but I never show you this one because I look at it and go, eh, nothing special with it. But you know what? It doesn't matter if they're mining grapefruits or they're manufacturing tiddlywinks. If it's making money, it's making money. And that's the bottom line. So they did have a catalyst today and it did jump again. So what was the relative volume around this company today? She normally does a quarter million shares a day. Today she did almost a million. So that's almost 400% increase in volume. Her share structure, well, that's not bad either. We got 18.7 million shares, which is pretty impressive considering they got 1.8 billion that they could put on the market. They've only got 70 million on the market and less than 20 million in the float. That's pretty good. Let's take a look at those financials now. Let's see what we got over here. Ooh, geez. All right, that's a loss, $628 thousand dollars. We got to put three zeros behind that right there. Holy cow. That's the annual. What's the quarterly look like? Ooh. So she was up 388,000 down a million. Absolutely nothing. And then up $11,000. Wow. So they got to get this. What? Cost of revenue. Yeah. See, they're losing money across the board here. So I'm not real sure what's going on. There should be a new quarterly here. As a matter of fact, let's go see. If there is a new quarterly, yeah, there it is, December. 
the new quarterly report came out. We're not going to jump into it. They need to get their revenues on track, and I would think they'd be close to that now because, like I said, they're involved in a lot. They've got a lot going on, and I would think that they would be making money. So let's go take a look at that news. Well, I can tell you this much. This company is not lacking in information. They do put out press releases regularly and let you know what's going on. And we're not going to read all those. I just want you to get a eyeball full. We have gone back to December of 2020. That is 30 PRs right there, but there's a total of 82 if you just want to keep on scrolling down. Now, one thing I want to point out is back in the late part of 2020 and halfway through 2021, they made three acquisitions. They got a home phone company, a trucking company, and a media company. Pay no mind to the Snoop Dogg collaboration. They're just dropping his name there for bonus points. He's in one of the YouTube videos that they have. That's it. Now, the home phone and the trucking company, honestly, I don't see any more news about them at all. They're not even mentioned anywhere in here. But the media company, well, that is it. That is everything they're about, and it has become comedy. That's it. Comedy, comedy, comedy. That's all they do. And all of the news here in blue, which I'm going to let you read, is all the things that they are actually doing. They made a deal here, a distribution deal with Foundation Sales. They made another acquisition of Funny Media Studios. Signs a digital marketing deal with Los Angeles Studios. And then you have the news today, which is got it running. So let's take a look at that. UMAX tells us that they have, through their subsidiary Funny Media Group, signed a deal with Vire Network to distribute season one of FMG's comedy specials. More than 200 shows in all. What? 200 episodes in one season? Can you think of a favorite TV show you wish had 200 episodes in a season? Whoa! This is fantastic news for Funny Media Group and all of the comedians who joined us for season one. That's the president and CEO, Rondell Fletcher, who's got a lot of experience in TV. Uh, Vire's distribution includes Apple TV, Roku, Amazon, Fire Stick, and Samsung. Not a one of those is a little network. Those are all huge. After the acquisition of Funny Media Group in May 2021, UMAX has now fully transitioned into comedy development as the vehicle to achieve cash flow positive operation and to provide the best return on shareholders' investment. Well, that's what's happened to Home Foam and the trucking company. They're off in the back burners. They own them. They're probably doing something, but this is the one making the money, and this is the one they're going to zoom in on, which is obviously why it's climbing today. Mr. Fletcher, the CEO, has an extensive background in production and media. He has owned his own production studio in Los Angeles for the past 20 years and has produced national shows for CNN, Fox, Food Network, and Comedy Central. Well, that's good, among others. The short-term goal for Funny Media Group is to produce content for streaming services such as Netflix and Amazon with long-term goal of building a large media catalog for acquisition. They want to sell it to somebody for some big bucks. Somebody who'll play it over and over and over again and make royalties forever. So they've got half the battle there. They're on Amazon, right? Now they're trying to get the Netflix. So let's go see what that chart looks like and see if she continued growing through the whole day. Well, that's the chart with the proof in the pudding. That is UMAX's six-month, four-hour chart, and we're looking at this on Think or Swim. If you haven't got a trading platform and you want one, hey, this one's free. Just go on over to TD Ameritrade, sign up for a free account. You don't have to trade with them. Just keep your account open and you can use this just like me. So we see we had a high back here of 34 cents. We're currently at a dime, but she did fall to just over a nickel. That's one heck of a fall. She's been under the 200 most of that time. And then you've got those news bounces I was telling you about over and over again. And you can see there's days there. There are days of growth. Boom, 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 boom. So this stock has a tendency to grow on news. So let's take a look at that 20-day, one-hour look. All right, so I see that she has been sitting on the 200 just until about 15 days ago when things started to change in the world real drastically, and she's fallen underneath everything. She has shown no strength here, hit that low bubble here just a few days ago, and two days later is starting to climb on the news. Volume in the very beginning of the day, just like all the rest. 
Let's come down to that five day, five minute. All right, so she was going sideways, hanging on to the 50. You can see she's definitely on that 50, right in the middle there. And then came the news today. Big volume spike, first thing in the morning. And the rest of the day wasn't bad volume, but nowhere near as much as came in initially. But what is impressive is that she grew so steadily and then held her growth all the way till, well, the high of here has hit about 2 in the afternoon. And she didn't start falling to about 2.30, 2.40. And what's interesting, she was sitting on the 50 primarily, which is the predominant SMA because there is no 200 here. See here, it just started. And where did the price come down to? The price fell through the 50 where it's been sitting and is now jumping down to the 200. And that's where it's sitting. It's found its ledge and it's sitting right on the 200. It's playing to the most powerful SMA on the board. So this could get another bounce. We have seen multiple bounces behind the news. That happens on most occasions. She has come down under the signal line and looks to be turning up. The RSI is nothing impressive. But I would say keep your eye on UMAX because she has a tendency of bouncing multiple days after news and definitely, definitely bouncing on the news. So if nothing else, if she doesn't move tomorrow, you're going to want to put this in your watch list so you don't miss the next bounce because of me. You'll miss it next time because you didn't have it in your watch list. Put UMAX in your watch list. It's a great bouncer you can count on. So this is another stock, ticker WSNAF, We Sana Health, that had a real strong day today, at least to start. By the end of the day, it too is being pounded down like most of the market. We Sana Health finished the day at 70 cents, 25% up. She's on the OTCQB. That's the middle tier of the OTC market. You have to audit your financials if you want to be on the QB. That's going to make you more trustworthy and more transparent better stocks to invest in than the pinks that don't always audit. They have all the green ticks we like to see over here. They too have got a stock promotion going on right now, which is probably helping the stock. And they've got independent directors. Now you needed those independent directors anytime you uplist. So when they came to the QB, they needed them. If they're going to go to the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange, they're going to need them. So you got to have independent directors listed here if anybody plans to uplist. So what does WeSana Health do? Well, they are in novel drugs. They are creating novel drugs to help people with brain injuries and severe depression. And we're gonna get more information about that looking at the news. Speaking of news, they had news today and it was pretty exciting. Though you can't see it right now, it was running this morning. And it's actually exciting news for people who have depression and brain injuries. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Whoa, whoa, that's big, that's huge. We went from 20,000 shares to 811,000. Now I know that's not a big number, but that's 40, 40 times her normal volume. That's impressive. What is their share structure on this stock? Ho oh, ho, we got another loaf bloat. Yes, I like that. We got 14.7 million shares in this. They tell us they have unlimited shares, but that's not the case. They are a foreign company. That's what the F means. I'm willing to bet they're from Canada. Let's take a look. Where are they from? Ah, company profile would tell me. Chicago. Well, that's interesting because you get an F from a foreign company. And they will tell you in Canada that they have an unlimited amount of shares. Nobody has an unlimited amount of shares, I assure you. Everybody has a set number. They just don't have to tell us. But they did tell us to float. 14 million. What are their financials? Okay. This is going to happen again because they are a foreign company. Now, I don't know why they have an office in Chicago and they're not showing us the foreign office address, but this is what happens with a lot of foreign companies. They file the financials in their own countries. So it's not showing up here. Disclosures. We got anything new over here? Uh, nope. 
We don't even have their financials over here. Again, they're going to be in their own country. So what we got is the news. So let's mosey on over there. Just like you, Max, Wisana's got a lot of news too. And we like to see that. A company that keeps in touch with their investors. Now I've scrolled back here to September. They made an acquisition back then of SciTech. This is a psychedelic company. And they had technology that was going to help promote this company's drugs forward in the pipeline. Then here in October, the company actually got their shares put into an ETF. Advisor Shares Psychedelics added them. Now this is great. ETFs are a basket of stocks. If you're having a hard time choosing which psychedelic stock you want to get into, but you know they're going to grow, well you get into an ETF. They get a whole bunch of different psychedelic companies into one basket. So you're invested in all those companies. And when the sector starts to grow, they all start to grow. And the ETF grows quite quickly. We see they're also involved with ketamine, though I don't see a lot of information about that. And then comes the big piece of news right here. They ask the FDA for help to bring these novel drugs through the pipeline. How do we go about doing this? And I want you to take a look at this because it basically gives you a definition of what the drug is. Wisana Health Holdings is pleased to announce that the U.S. Food and Drug Administration granted the company's request for a pre-IND, that is an investigational new drug, meeting to discuss the novel therapy and proprietary protocol of SANA-013 for the treatment of traumatic brain injury, that's TBI, related major depressive orders, that's MDD. So what is it exactly? Wisana's drug development program looks to utilize combination therapy to treat migraine and symptoms associated with TBI, such as depression, by utilizing psilocybin and cannabinoids, a combination therapy of compounds with demonstrated effectiveness. SANA-013 is targeted to improve neuroplasticity and neurogenesis while acting as an anti-neuroinflammatory. SANA-013 utilizes loading dose of psilocybin followed by self-administered maintenance doses of psilocybin and CBD to provide more sustained effects and benefit over time. So you are taking a dose of LSD and then you're following it up with micro doses of LSD and CBD to prolong the effects. <laughs> well, I don't know about micro dosing. I do know that Big doses can make you feel happy, make you feel mad, make you feel sad. So I am interested to know how in the heck they control all of this. But that is what they're doing. Then you come back to the most recent piece of news. And this is saying that they have got the permission that they were looking for. This came out today, March 14th. The company received positive written responses from the FDA on March 11th, outlining the requirements to open the IND and commence with clinical studies for SANA-013. The company believes the written response provides a path to agreements on the IND, enabling studies and validates the team's efforts and accomplishments over the past year. Wasana intends to initiate its inhuman clinical study program in late 2022. The FDA's response also provided important insights pertaining to advancing SANA-013 as a potential treatment for TBI-related MDD. Now that really sounds optimistic. When the FDA is guiding you, here's how you go about doing it. This is the best path to take. We can do the most for you if you go about it this way. So there seems to be a lot of excitement around this drug for helping people who have brain injuries and serious depression. Psilocybin, well, you know, it's moving through the FDA faster than marijuana is. But CBDs are part of this therapy. All very interesting to me. And it must be interesting to the investors because it's been climbing today. As usual, we're looking at a four hour, six month chart. This is WSNAF, we sana. Had a high back here of about $4, had a low yesterday of 51 cents, and right now we're at 70 cents. We hit a high today though of a dollar two. Now she has been under the 200 while the 200 has been here. Looks as though if we were to draw this across, it was above it. It was definitely above it back here, but not for a long while and it's not even close. Trying to get closer, but not there yet. But what I do see is a humongous spike of volume. Look at the size of that folks. If we come back here to the biggest one over the last six months, we are far past that. 
Unbelievable. Let's come down to the 20 day, one hour look. All right, she's had no power. She's under the 200, 50, 20. I mean, she's under everything and she's on a free fall. She hit that low bubble, like I said yesterday, and it looks like she had a bounce off of it. This climb is before the news and that was yesterday. Then today came and wow, look at all that volume, incredible. And she tore it up. She shot way up over the 200, but has come down below it. Focusing in now on the five day, five minute. All right, I always like to draw a line at the bottom of the surge and at the top of the surge. Then I find the middle and I'm just gonna eyeball it here, but you can do the math and figure it out. But right about there I think is close. Now the reason I do that, when I see a big surge, I like to figure if it keeps 50% of those gains, it's gonna hold its position and probably grow. Chances are, I have more confidence in it. But if it comes below that 50% gain mark, like here, I'm not so confident that it's gonna get back over it. Now we had a very strange day here. She hit this high of 86 cents from 56 cents. That's over a 50% gain in the first five minutes. And then it started to fall. And everybody watching knew it was gonna test the 10. But that is a long drop to test a 10. And it may fail. It may just keep going and you've just given up gains waiting for a test. So personally, I may have been out here, maybe. But she came down and not only did she pass this test, but look at this. She rolled that like a ramp straight up until she hit her high at uh, 20 to noon. Then she came down, forgot about the 10 and started riding the 20. Then fell through the 20 and was reaching for the 50. Not good. This is a sign of desperation. Then she gave it all away, broke all the SMAs, went through the 50 day gain and fell on the now appearing 200 SMA. You see what happens? She just gets on the board and the price pushes right to it because that is what buyers can now see and they respect large SMAs. So she sits there right now. Her MACD has fallen all day. Still looks like it's falling. RSI is pathetic. Oh my God, that's horrible. Below the floor, digging into the ground. Yeah, we're at 25, under the 30, which is the floor. So it doesn't look like she wants to continue growing. But in saying that, this is a company that has now gotten approval to get into their phase one drug. Now phase one is very early. That means there's a long time to go. But here's the kick in the butt. Psychedelic drugs are getting advancements, fast tracks. They're getting pushed to the head of the line. They're novel drugs. This ketamine, DMT, psilocybin, all of this stuff is being pushed through FDA, not cannabis. No, cannabis, THC, CBDs, they're being dragged down. They're being slowed down. Yeah, you can smoke it, but being used as medicine, no. And the reason I think is because THC and CBDs are inexpensive. They can't compete with the money that's being made off of opiates or other things. Where psychedelic drugs, they're going to be expensive. They're going to charge a lot for that, even if you do put a pinch of CBD in it. So I'd keep my eye on this company. And if you're not sure because there are so many psychedelic drug companies out there, go to the ETF that this was in. That could be your best bet. Last stock we're taking a look at is CGSI, that is CGS International. They finished the day at 56 cents, only 25% gains, and that's probably as much as she did the whole day, honestly. She's on the pink tier in current. They've got all their green ticks over there, so they look good, but they are a shell risk. Now, a shell risk means that they're supposed to be reporting revenues, but they're not. And I'm a little surprised by, by that. I did read all the news, but I didn't check this. Let's see if they have any money. Nothing on the yearly, nothing on the quarterly. So yeah, they're a shell risk. But as I said, going through the news, they've had uh, some news here and two of the pieces of news definitely open up doors. One is a domino effect. If they could get this contract, then they could get this contract and then that one and that one and that is what's happening. The other one has just opened up a super highway for them to create revenue selling their special product. Now, what is their special product? Well, this company makes something called Genesis 89. Genesis 89 has been formulated to contain over 80 different trace minerals. You think it's 89? 
and contains a unique proprietary blend of these organic trace minerals. The Genesis 89 product line boasts the highest concentration of seawater harvested minerals available on the commercial and even retail market. So they've got a unique super fertilizer, if you will. Now, something I do want to point out is that this company is really out of the Philippines, which is where they're doing a lot of their business and business is starting to open up for them. So as I said, there was news today and it was good news. It was about that super highway that they're going to be able to use to make more revenues. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Eh, a little more. Uh, 225,000 is her average. Today she did 351,000. So we had a little more. Then our share structure, woo, we got three out of three here. How about that? Hot dog, 16.8 million shares out of 21 million total. Outstanding. It's pretty impressive. Disclosures, they got any 8Ks or anything over here. They do. Nah, that one's old. A couple months back, so we got nothing else going here. Let's check out the news. Now, unlike the other two, this one hasn't got as much news, but it's got enough news. <laughs> this only goes back to December. There are eight press releases here. The first two basically go hand in hand and the green ones go hand in hand. The first two have to do with business they're doing in the Philippines. Now, remember, this company is based in the Philippines, so they're just working their own backyard right now. They cut a deal with this huge co-op. It's got 1,200 hectares of property. I'm not quite sure what they're growing, but they want to buy this super fertilizer and they're going to be getting about 18,000 liters over the next year at $30 a liter. That's about a half a million dollars. And though that is impressive, what they're most excited about is the domino effect. That's where this second piece of news comes in. Seems there's about 10,000 co-ops in the Philippines. Can you believe that? And they have just made a deal with one of those businesses in that other co-op and they think this is going to start dominoing. They think they're going to get more and more and more companies, but right now they say it's just impossible to try to predict what our revenues are going to be, but we are excited about it. Then they break off into something completely different here. They announce that they want to get into organic plant-based foods. Now this piece of uh, news here does tell us why they want to do that, but they give us a little bit more news that I couldn't find anywhere else. This came out February 28th and basically they think that organic foods are going to be like frozen foods were in the 1950s and 60s. Very popular, not a fad, so much so that supermarkets created entirely new sections of their store just to house the frozen foods. And that's what this company believes is going to happen with organic food. It is not a passing fad. It will be a way of life for many people. But further down, I found this. By way of update, as relates to our flagship Genesis 89 products and operations, we've decided to use drones as a delivery method. The use of drones provides a more cost-efficient and earth-friendly method of delivery. Well, that's interesting. Drones running all over the Philippines delivering their Genesis 89. Haven't seen that anywhere else and I don't know how big of a deal it is, but there it is. Then they go and tell us they have not yet finalized any agreement relating to plant-based foods. Well, not until we look at the next piece of news. Ta-da! Genesis 89 Gold is pleased to announce it has reached a deal to acquire certain rights to organic plant-based foods with mindful food. No, that's not FUD, that's food. They need to put a line over the U. Uh, this company is in Canada. CGSI and Mindful Food have agreed on a framework of territorial license agreement whereby CGSI shall acquire the exclusive marketing, manufacturing, and distribution rights to all Mindful Food products in Asia. I don't know how big that market is, but it's all theirs. And it goes on to say that they are negotiating to get other geographical regions as well. Now, I'm not too familiar with what type of products Mindful Food has. Maybe you should do a little bit more DD there. Then their last piece of news kind of caps it all off, but it's uniquely different. And though this company has assets, their products are not what they're truly interested in. They tell us here that Genesis 89 Gold is pleased to announce it has acquired all the assets of Agrarian Organics UK Limited, a company based in the United Kingdom. 
Okay, so now we're in the Philippines, Canada, and the United Kingdom. They're spreading fast. They tell us that on March 11, 2022, the company and Agrarian Organics entered into an asset purchase agreement under which the company acquired all the assets of Agrarian Organics. Among the assets acquired was Plant Grow, which is a fertilizer for home grown crops and plants, and they got Orchid Grow, which obviously helps orchids to grow. But that wasn't what they were interested in. No, they make it perfectly clear down here. Further, as part of the agreement, the company has also acquired the online sales stores. They have an online sales store in the UK, they have a website on Amazon for the UK, and they also have Amazon stores in Germany, France, Spain, Italy, Netherlands, Poland, the United States, Canada, and Mexico. And all of those were acquired by the company. And they tell us down here, that's what they wanted. They wanted all of those markets. Folks, it's not as easy to get an Amazon store on Amazon as you may think it is. So getting Amazon stores is huge. You know it's one of the biggest markets in the world. And how many countries did they cover there? A lot. So they are interested in all those Amazons to sell their Genesis 89 and maybe organic foods. I don't know. But that's where they're at right now. They have made deals for organic food. They have made deals to get stores, though they got two products with it. And they're making these co-op deals over in the Philippines. So they're making money and it's starting now. So now would be a good time to look at it. Speaking of a good time to look at it, let's go look at the chart now. <laughs> So we've got some huge bounces on this six month, four hour chart of CGSI. And I wish I could tell you what this was all about, but I can't. This happened in November and the news that we just looked at, the very first one didn't happen until December. So I have no clue here. What I do know is that is an incredible jump. It went from $4 to $26, folks. That's $26, not 26 cents. And it has fallen all the way down here to 45 cents. And that is one, two, three, four months ago. Four months ago, she was at $26 and now she's at 45 cents. Volume is picking up. You can see that. I'm going to draw a line there so you can see it. It's going right across there like that. And we've had some breakouts even higher and she's climbing. So I would keep my eye on it just because the volume is starting to show something is changing. The RSI or the MACD is just approaching the signal line. The RSI is terrible right now. Terrible. Let's go look at that 20 day one hour. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this line. We don't need that for the volume anymore, do we? Nah. So she is far under the 200, underneath everything. She did cross the 200 hole here, and she is just under the 50. Yesterday, she had a low bubble and has not done a whole lot with it. Doesn't look very appealing here. I see we have a crossover just starting right there on the one hour. Now we're going to zoom in on that five day, five minute. It's looking just like the last one, right? We're under the 200. We're just tagging it. I mean, just barely tagging the 200, and now we're a ways away from it. But we see that our 200 is turning up, the 50 is turning up, and the MACD is not looking promising. So this is a mixed bag right now. Honestly, I would not consider this to be moving tomorrow or the next day. What I would consider is that it's at 45 cents and only three and a half months ago, it was at $26. The company has just opened up all these avenues to make money in Poland, Germany, Canada, the UK, France, Mexico. I mean, they've got a lot going on and they've got a very unique product that doesn't seem to have any other uh, competition as far as I can tell. So it looks bleak right now, folks, but I'm thinking that CGSI could bounce and when it bounces, it's going to bounce hard. It likes to sit up around the $4 mark on average and now it's down 10 times from that. It's down 56 cents. So I would put CGSI on your watch list just because of the gap between the low bubble and the high bubble in the last four months. Watch the news. One piece of news and this could literally launch to the moon. If you remember correctly, at the very beginning, I had three stocks plus one. 
this is the plus one this is mx mgd at least for now and we're really not going to look at a whole lot about this stock because i only want to point out one particular detail sonarco funds inc just got this name it was about 10 12 days ago we all looked at this stock we couldn't find any information for why it was running so we went over to Twitter and they kept saying there was going to be a reverse merger with this company. The reverse merger was going to be with Sonarco. The company's name at the time was Maxima. But I couldn't find any news on no reverse merger, not from Sonarco or Maxima. There was no press release, nothing on any of their websites. So how was anybody coming to this conclusion? So I did some digging around. And what I discovered was over here in their most current quarterly report, right there Sonarco Life contact website Sonarco Life but there's the name of the company Maxima Group so we knew there was something going on this is a legal document going to the SEC and FINRA that right there tells us everything so we knew there was going to be a reverse merger we just didn't know when it was going to be well it happened it happened on February 28th but not only did a reverse merger happen a reverse split happened a one in 1000 and look what they left us for the float oh my god 43,000 shares that's it 43,000 in the entire float they only got 1 million in the entire outstanding but what's scary here is they got 3 billion in the authorized shares so they could start doing a bunch of public offerings and bringing stock onto the market or they could do a forward split that's possible too nobody I doubt to do a forward split after a reverse split in either case we are at 43,000 shares and just to show you there is nothing going on right now look at the volume <laughs> four shares a day for the last 30 days and she was at a price of double zero seven today she did 535 shares and her price is four dollars and 25 cents did you happen to notice her gains today sixty thousand percent oh my god so the ticker is going to change we don't know what that ticker is going to be that's what the d at the end signifies they're going through changes and you can tell that's maxima's old ticker so that's going to be new here soon don't know what it's going to be so you're going to have to look this company up by its name sonarco don't know if the price is going to stay here i don't know what's going to go on but with a share structure with forty-five thousand. I would pay attention to this stock first piece of news that comes out and they got to give us some news they got to tell us what's going on I'll tell you right now Sonarco invests in real estate they invest in artwork and they use the blockchain they've got a bunch of things going on they got a website go check it out you may be interested what I'm interested in is that bloody low float so there you go three plus one and I got to tell you, it was tough finding them today. But even on a hard day on the market, there's always something going on. Consolidation, reverse mergers, reverse splits. There's something going on. And you may not be able to find the runner for tomorrow, but you're definitely finding stocks with potential to watch. But the key is, if you put them on your watch list, you got to watch them, right? What's the point of doing all that DD if you're not going to cash in on it later? Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.